I'm hopping about a bit on this job. I don't really want to go under the car at the moment, so I thought I'll have a look at the busiest part of the loom, which is the bit that goes under the dashboard. I'm pretty sure that one's wiper, and that comes out there. I'm pretty sure this one is oil pressure sender, and you can see that one goes down here, and there is a cable clip just here, but to get to that I've got to get the fuel filter housing off, uh, which is slightly annoying. The one I'm a bit confused on just at the minute is these, as far as I know, are the coil wires, and there's two of them. But when we took the old wiring off, there was only one on the coil. So on the coil here, you've got a wire coming from here over to the distributor, and then you have the other post, um, which did have a wire connected to it. And that doesn't match what this is, which says but probably what was in the car was wrong, um, which wouldn't surprise me. So I just need to figure that one out. It'll be something straightforward. And of course, the next thing to do is get some grommets in, because there are no grommets at all. This one disintegrated. That one didn't exist. This job just continues to be frustrating. So I've already done that side. And I'm fairly confident that's correct. All the wires that come out are the right colours for what I'd expect for where they go to. So that's good. That's where the wiper motor lives. This side has been a little bit more problematic because I have no point of reference. Everything here was just messed about with. And what we've been doing, because we don't have any other sort of clues, is going with where things felt like they wanted to go and how it was done when we got the car. So this hole here has the speedo cable, which is the thicker one, and the capillary tube for the temperature sender coming through it. But I don't think that's correct. Um, and the reason I don't think that's correct is I've been fighting with this wiring loom and I was trying to get all the wires that connect to the voltage regulator through this hole and they just wouldn't go. And I sat back and had a think and a proper look and realized that's because the wires for here go through that hole and these wires are the ones that run down the steering column. They're actually clamped onto the steering column originally. Um, so now that I've got that routed, it's highlighting other issues. This, this is not a job I'm particularly enjoying, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm actually hating this a little bit. But I know once everything's rooted, once we've figured that out, and I've actually made some diagrams so other people can understand how everything roots, it's hopefully something we'll never need to touch again. Oh, and of course, the, the grommets provided are the wrong size, because... Right, we finally figured out the wiring route, and it's a nightmare. Um, every car I've looked at, and every Lanchester I've looked at, the wiring's different in the engine bay, and I haven't seen one with original wiring intact, presumably because it's all degraded. So there's not a lot to go off. So in the engine bay, instead of all the wiring that went to the dashboard coming out through this hole, this one is now the main branch for the bit that goes down the chassis. It's the generator and the starter motor on this side. Yeah. The next hole over, originally when we got the car, had the speedo cable and the um, capillary tube for the coolant sensor going through there, but that doesn't seem right. I'm not sure what route they're supposed to take, but the speedo cable particularly is just hanging loose under the car, so that needs routing properly. I'm not enjoying this job at all. This is a horrible job, and if I never have to do wiring on another car again, it'll be too soon. Well, that was quite literally painful. Oh, this is the problem when you don't have instructions. So, we had got this one coming through 
this hole and they needed to be the other way around. They cannot both go through the same hole, they have to go through separate holes and this is the route they want to take. The reason this one can't go out through there is because these wires will then be too short to reach the voltage regulator. Something we didn't realise until after we'd spent ages putting everything in. The original holes in the bulkhead are big enough for this wire, no problem. It's a little bit tight where the extra bindings and junctions are, but you can do it. Uh, what a horrible job. If you enjoy wiring, I, I think there might be something wrong with you. This, this is right up there for me with engine rebuilding. Ugh. Well that took some figuring out. We are getting there though. So up at the bulkhead here, all of these loose wires go into voltage regulator. And then these here branch off for the steering column wiring, or rather the wiring that runs along the outside of the steering column. So this goes to the front lights, basically, and the horns, and that will connect up with this. I'll go through that in a bit. Um, down here, I think this is a branch for the horns. Not 100% sure. And we've got wiring for the dynamo and for the starter motor. The wiring route's a bit strange. You can see it's disappearing off here into the inside wing. I'll show you on the other side because it's much the same. So you can see there it disappears off into the inside wing. Now before all of this wiring was replaced so I couldn't trust the wiring route, so I've used common sense. On this side, passenger side, you can see it's coming out the same bit, and that goes up to there. That's where the horn lives, so I'm pretty sure they're the horn wires. And in the wheel arch, there's the other side, and it goes through a hole in this bracket here. And that hole, there's one that side and one that side. So the wiring goes through there and then you have the branch off for the headlights, which is held up in the wing support. That there is a wire clamp, which I will do when I've got the headlights off and ready to be wired. And then that wiring runs up there. Now the thing I haven't got installed yet is the side light wiring I'm not sure which section that is, so I'll have to dig that out. So you've come from the engine bay through into this box section, branched off for your headlights, and then across and down. When you come down, you go... This is the radiator. Or rather, this is the bracket where the radiator sits, and the wiring loom wants to sit here. Now originally when I took the wiring out it was cable tied to this but I wonder if it's supposed to be on little p-clips on these bolts here. That would certainly make sense. And that runs all the way across to the other side and you have a branch off for the stator tube and then it's branching off to the column and everything else. So it's a bit fiddly but once you've actually figured it out it's not that bad and there doesn't seem to be any points where it's going to chafe and it seems to be out of the way of any road dirt and stuff so fingers crossed looks a bit messy at the moment once everything's all connected up it won't it'll look a lot better than that um, the other thing that we're going to have to figure out is the correct routing for the speedo and the capillary tube because of course now that we've gone through this hole here for the wiring, which was the only hole big enough to put the wiring through, it's not entirely clear where those other elements should go, and I don't think they were going through the right holes before anyway. 
So that one's going to be an interesting challenge to work out. This is a problem when you buy somebody else's project, you always end up faced with these issues. Got the back end buttoned up as far as I can go today. I need some bullet connectors, there aren't any provided. Um, and I need them to connect up to those light units, so can't go any further with that. I also can't figure out which piece is supposed to be for the um, number plate light. It's kind of odd. This piece, I know this is the section that runs along the chassis rail, front to back. Because that there is the brake switch. This is where it joins the rest of the loom. That's an earth point. And this blue one here, that's for the fuel sender on the petrol tank, so I know which piece that one is. What I can't identify is this one, which is just a single wire. Normally when they're in a black cable like this, it means they go on the outside, so this could be a main earth. I'm not sure. I also can't identify this one, which has a couple of sections of the black um, coating stuff and just bullet connectors each end. It's really, 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 really long. Um, so I don't think it's for the boot light because having mocked it up on the car, it's much too long for that. It's about the length of the entire car. So that one's a bit strange. The other one that's a bit strange is I can't find any wiring for the side lights. I've got wiring here for headlights, but I don't seem to have anything for side lights. I don't know what that's about. My experience with this loom has not been a good one. I have to be honest. It's well made, but I don't know, maybe it's because I'm new to the process. I just, I haven't enjoyed any of it. I found it stressful and literally painful at times and not at all enjoyable. the next day. I must have spent about eight hours yesterday trying to get my head around this in the foggy weather and I was doing that thing where I was getting a bit sort of not seeing things properly because I've been doing it so long. So I've come back to it with a fresh mind, had a bit of a natural on some of the forums, talked to some friends and it's put a few things in perspective on what was stressing me out yesterday and I feel a bit more confident going forwards now. As you can see, it's all jacked up and it's ready to have a look underneath and I'm squinting into the sun so let's bring you in and have a look with the wheels off so I can show you a bit better what's going on. Now I had thought that these wires all went to the headlights and they don't. What was confusing me here is the rewiring that had been done and the fact that we've had some of this apart and then not put it back together straight away. So a good look through video footage, photographs, wiring diagrams, all the rest of it. And I basically started from scratch, mentally. So these two are for the headlights. And this one is for the side lights. For some reason, I thought this was too short to get to the side lights, but it's not, you can see that's the side light there, so obviously that's long enough. And then the headlight portion pops up through in there. So this is fine. These are all ready to be threaded through into the homes. I'll do that shortly. The other thing you can see a bit more clearly with the wheel removed is the wiring route. So it comes into this box section-y bit here, and there's the spur up for the lights, and then the wiring loom goes through this box as a hole either side. So it can then go through this hole in the inner arch without interfering with any of the suspension and then on into the car. The rest of the wiring loom actually runs inside this chassis section here. And that's on the other side, on the blind side to where we are now. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky to show you. There's a few, you can see there's a few random bits of wiring from the partial rewire that was done before we got the car.
Here at the back, again, wheel off, you can see the fuel tank and the axle and the brake rods. And way up there is a fuel sender and the wire runs from that to the cross member at the back behind the tank where it's cable tied on. It then comes back forwards here. There's a junction back there somewhere. These pop up into the boot floor and they go inside this chassis leg. And this bit here is one piece of wiring and there's another piece, can I show you? There's another piece there, which is the underside of the same piece that runs across the width of the car. These then go inside the chassis box section and work their way all the way to the front of the car along the chassis legs. So that long mystery wire with the three wires on, that's the full length of the car, that actually goes through here because I thought there was just one length of wire in here, I hadn't seen the second one, and there's actually two, and that's why we have that extra length. So presumably, one of those goes up into the boot and maybe for the um, number plate light, even though the colors don't match. But then, that's one of the other frustrations, is the, the colors on the wiring diagram, the colors on the new loom and the colors on the old loom they're not always the same. So what I've, it's like having three different manuals in three different languages because I've been trying to decipher, I've been trying to decipher what the replacement wiring is, mostly by ignoring the colors, to be honest with you, because it just confuses matters. Trying to figure out what colors these used to be so that I can cross-reference that. Trying to figure out which wiring colors have been used on the wiring diagram, which is done to one standard set of colours, and which standard is done on the new loom, which is done to another set of standard colours. That's why I was getting quite frustrated yesterday. Add into that the palaver that we're having up here with things not fitting, well, yeah. It's a wonder I didn't throw anything, really, to be honest. Up underneath the car, uh, apologies for the lighting, I don't have much choice back here. You can see this is the inside of the chassis leg. There's the floor of the car. I found one clip just there, which is bolted on from the other side into what looks like a captive nut. But the bolt head looks, well, round, to be honest. So the tricky part's going to be threading this new wiring through all the various holes in the chassis, just to keep everything where it needs to run. I probably won't be able to show you this because, well, if I had a lift I probably could, but just me on the driveway on axle stands, not a hope. And there you go, I've got... Safety is important, so axle stands on the chassis there. Because, ironically, I can't actually get them in on the axle, but... Yeah. We're getting there. One downpour out of the way. I've just cracked this nut off here. And this is for the fuel sender. So I disconnect this to put the new wire through. Before I pull that wire through, to make it easier to route the new one, Tie some string on. That just means as I pull it through, when I get the new wire, it will just follow the same route. It should, in theory, make it easier to put the wiring back through the chassis as well, so I'll be using the same technique. And that wire comes down the back of the car. You can just see it here. And then there's these, what are effectively metal cable ties, just on this tube that runs the width of the chassis. So I need to undo those, and then I can unfeed the wire, and feed that string through after it. 
That was a nuisance to learn, got the clamps off easily, but this wire is held in with this clamp here, which supports the petrol tank, so I've got to slacken this off, which is really rusty, and then I can feed this through. Wasn't expecting that. Once that is free, it pops out back here, where you've got the two bits of the loom, and then I'll be able to unpick that a lot easier. It's one of these kind of jobs, when you're laying on your back, you've got ring spanners that are a really specific shape so you can clear everything and you can't easily see what you're doing. But, it is coming undone surprisingly easily considering how crusty everything looked, so I'm quite surprised about that. These are 5 sixteenths BSF. And these are the only two spanners that size I can find that I've got. Which is lucky. Trying out my Diddy tripod for this one. So I've got the jack lined up just with this curve of the tank because that's the strong bit. And I just need to lift the tank a tiny bit. I'm not going to run the string through there, I know it needs to go through that bit, um, so I'll just run the string around it and then we'll thread the new wire in properly. The route this is taking is really tight, you can see to the left there you've got the single wire for the fuel sender and then going into that hole that's the main loom and everything's all kind of squashed in so I'm going to have to just try and finagle this out, that is going to be awkward because there's not quite enough space for fingers and then I'll bring you back when I've got it out This has fast become one of those jobs As you can see, I have removed the filler neck I mean this needed to be removed anyway to give this a clean up and a repair so it's going to have to come off eventually and this isn't exactly in the best condition so I need to replace that, I can measure that now Use some gaffer tape just to protect the filler neck, stop anything getting in the tank. And the reason... The reason the fuel tank needs to come off is all the wiring here, where it goes down the side of the tank, because it's all in and out and all over, the tank is basically jamming it in place. I need to be able to pull the wires this way. And I can't do that with the tank in place, so... Thankfully... The tank's fairly easy to remove. There's just two bolts. Let's see, where are they? Yeah, so you have a bolt there and one in the similar location. That side, which I can't show you because the exhaust's in the way. So I'm going to undo those and then I should be able to wiggle this out and drop it out of the car. And then I should be able to get access to the wiring. This is what's been taking so long with this job it's figuring out where things go and how things are supposed to fit and what you need to take apart to do it because well the wiring is one of the first things to go in the car so yeah not fun though I've got my mate Jack helping me underneath the car and I'm hoping I can just sort of wiggle this and get it out
get the fuel tank out, I've got to drop the exhaust, which I don't really want to do. But I can get to the wiring up here. This is a bit that was all jammed by the petrol tank. There is a mystery wire here. Not that bit of string, there. That seems to go to this bolt, which was once captive and now isn't. So I think I'm going to have to chop that off to free that wire off. And then I'll reinstate that when the new wiring goes in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've not got the tank out, but I've got it out the way so I can unfeed everything, feed the new stuff through. First section pulled through. Um, this would have been impossible with the fuel tank in place because the shapes you need to make at that end, um, you can't do it with a petrol tank in place. Um, the biggest obstacle I'm having is the plastic sheathing here, which is to protect it from the elements, is actually getting jammed up inside the chassis rail as I'm trying to pull things through. So I'm going to have to take that off, I think, because this next section is basically blind well past this point and there are little access holes on the other side but you can't really see what you're doing or get in so you just sort of have to find where it's open underneath the car and then pull one of the wires and hope it's the correct one and hope that it goes and doesn't snag it's um it's going to be fun threading the new stuff back through to theoretically make things a bit easier to thread through you can see all my various strings here attached to wires. One of the things I'm having trouble with is this is the old plasticky casing stuff. This seems to be just for where the wiring comes out of the chassis and into the open air I suppose. Um, what I'm finding is as I'm trying to pull the wiring through it's bunching up and getting stuck so I chopped it off the old wiring because it's obviously not needed and hopefully that will help things move through a bit smoother. When you're inside the car you can sort of see, it's a bit tricky because there's not a lot of space and the sun's right in the wrong spot, but there's these little holes all on the inside of the chassis leg. This gives you the access to see where the wiring's going and it's tricky. It's really really tricky and it's like that until you get past the axle stand and then it opens out into just like a a U-channel and is a lot easier to see the wiring. Obviously I can't record this while I'm underneath here because there just isn't the space so I'm going to keep getting mobbed by seagulls apparently. Um, I'm going to keep wiggling all of this out until we get to something like a reasonable spot with it. I'm making some progress. We've now got the harness halfway down the car, which is really, really good. Now then, one of the things you have to be aware of is there are these clips, and these go into the chassis rail. You have one just in there, underneath the body mount where the B pillar is, and you have another one here on the rear body mount. It's just a little hole here for the outrigger. And I've been wearing goggles while I do this because the car has been showering me in dirt and rust and all the rest of it. Then, when you're pulling this out, the hole that it goes through in the chassis isn't round like that, it's kind of squashed. So you have to make sure the loom is pushed far enough to the thick part of the hole so you can actually pull it through. If you just try and pull it straight through, it'll get stuck. Next challenge, I've got to take these clips off because they won't go through the gap. Uh, and I'm nearly there. I've got the string coming through from the back, no problem. And I'm almost, almost to the front of the car. So that's really good. Oh, what a job.